Yeah. Alright. So, hello, I'm David. I'm going to be talking about Git today. And as the title of the talk says, I'm going to talk about uh, feeling comfortable with Git and how it can help you whenever you're coding and so on. I get, uh, get to talk a lot about this, so. Let me just start. Nope, that's not it. This is it. Okay, so first, um, I'm going to talk about what I consider to be a clean of Git history and why I consider having a clean Git history is important. And later on, I'm going to show you a few methods or tricks. How will you? Uh, to keep a clean history. And it's nothing groundbreaking or so on, but it's something I found really useful. And definitely when working in large teams and trying to maintain code written by others or by yourself some time ago. Okay, so the first thing here I mentioned is the message commit messages should follow conventions. And I specifically don't mention what conventions because that's not as important, but it's important that in your project or, or repository, you follow a single set of conventions so that uh, everybody can understand what every commit does, just looking at the title, for example, without having to understand your specific way of naming those commits and so on. And there's a, an important thing here about tooling as well, because uh, git commands, uh, log and uh, some others, they rely on a few specific conventions, which I can quickly show you, are listed in the git commit man page. Okay. This, this part here, which pretty much says that the first line of your commit message should be less than 50 characters and it should have an empty line after it, which are the, yeah, the most, most important conventions to follow. Um, the reasons for which I guess you can look into yourself later on. But yeah, so have conventions and follow them. The next point is that commits should be well explained. And this, this is so that you could actually use your Git history as a sort of documentation. The uh, Git commit messages are pretty similar to the documentation you should put into your code, but there are a few critical differences. The one really important difference is that your code comments or documentation in code, it can get outdated. If you do another change to the same line where you explain why you did it, the way it's done, and then suddenly the comment is outdated and somebody comes along and sees that the, this comment doesn't make sense anymore at all. And it's an issue. So you can avoid this by putting your comment into the git commit message, and this way, um, Actually, I sh I'll show you. This way you can uh, rely on the actual messages as a source of documentation. Um, and I don't know, uh, know how many of you use git blame often, show of hands maybe. Okay, not too many. This probably means that either you're not using the documentation you have available or you don't have the documentation available because in your project people don't write good commit messages, maybe. So as an example of uh, of this, I have an example, uh, yeah. Okay. 
this is just some code and what it does isn't really all that important. Just, um, okay. So, just as, as an example, I'm working on a project. I have this line here and it feels really weird. It, I see that it does some sort of a git rebase and it uses uh, PR here is a pull request. This is a this is code for a tool that we use at SailMove to work, make working with GitHub easier. And PR here is an actual pull request from GitHub. Base is the branch you want to merge into, and head is the branch you want to merge. And as you can see, the rebase uses the SHA or the actual revision of the head commit or branch, but it uses the ref, so the name of the branch for the base, and it has this weird string here, so I want to understand why. And one way I can do this, as, as you can see, there's no comments here or anything, so I come here, I'm really confused. So one way I can find out what's going on is I run git blame on this file. I find the line. I see that it's last. Uh, for those of you who haven't used Git Flame, basically annotates every line in the file you specify, and it shows the last commit that the file was changed in, or that line was changed in. And using this, we can copy this. Oh, no. Copy this. Nope. Okay. We can copy this revision here and open up the commit and see what's happening. All right. So there's apparently there was some sort of a quick fix, and uh, the committer apparently agrees that it's not a nice solution. But anyway, we understand why the string was added added here. But still, we don't. Get the we don't get why the ref is used here and sha here. It's this is still confusing for me. And a way to find out so I want to find out more about this file, how it has changed, or this line specifically. Um, okay, so there was a quick fix. Let's see what happened before this. So I have a revision where this was changed, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run git blame on the parent of that revision. So I'm, I, I will be looking at a state before that commit was made, and I'm going to look the annotate all the lines for the same file uh, and see what before that commit, when it every line got last changed. Okay, so tilde, let's go. Uh, and those who are not that familiar with Git, then the tilde here it basically selects a parent of a commit. I could have used a caret, um, this thing, which would do the exact same thing, but the difference between a tilde and a caret is um, that they both take a number as a modifier, like two for example, and now the two would select the second parent of the same commit, which is important if you're working with uh, merge commits because merge commits can have multiple parents and you want to select a specific one. And for tilde, if you use a number, what it does is it selects the first parent of a commit and then selects it again and does it twice or thrice or how many times you specify. But in any case, if you use a single one, they're, they're the exact same thing. Mm. Okay, see we have a Skype friend. Let me just check real quick. Um, hello? Hi. Um, you're a bit late, but I can start sharing it. That's fine. OK. Uh, you've already started? Yes. OK. We can wait for the second talk, then. You don't want to see that one? Um, so the things here started about 7? 
Sorry? Things here started about 7? Seven? 7? Uh, we started at 6, and this will be the next and one. And you have two, two talks? Yeah, I don't know when the next one's going to start right now, but after 7, yes. Okay. Okay. Let's continue. So, can you please mute yourself? Thank you. Yeah. So, um, now we've looked at the parent of the commit that the line got last changed in, and now we have a new annotated thing here, and we see another commit here, this one then. Let's see how that commit changed the files with git show. Um, okay, so this is just some file moving. We don't care about this commit, so let's go deeper. Let's run again git blame against its parent. Let's see when the line got last changed. Look at the commit. Wow, okay. And we see the specific thing we came looking for, that the SHA was changed to ref, and some, some comment about why that was done. So as you can see, the line had changed multiple times, and for different reasons in every time. And so if we had a single commit, comment on top of that line, that maybe would have been outdated by now, or maybe not have made sense. But with having the comments in the commit message, we can actually find out about every different change, why it was made. So that's why I think it's important to have commits that are well explained. And another thing I mentioned here is that every commit should be complete. And what I mean by that is that every commit should compile and tests should pass on that commit. And that's pretty much it. I don't think it's necessary to have the entire system to be fully functional. Like that, say your acceptance tests pass for every commit. I don't think that's necessary, but at least the unit tests and, and the code should compile for every commit. This is important when you start using tools like in Bisect, for example, uh, which, uh, which I'm going to show and explain later. <coughs> but these are the three main points, I think. Now, now that we've talked about what and why, let's talk about how. Uh, these are a few things that I've encountered a lot and ways to work around or to deal with them. And these are mostly important when you're working in a workflow that involves feature branches. Uh, what I mean by this is that you have in your project one, let's call it master branch because it's usually the master branch, where which which is always shared and everything that gets merged into master it can never be changed. It's like uh, written in stone, more or less. But then you have feature branches which you can commit on to and change at all times. <coughs> and you can also change the history of these, which is important because you probably want to get feedback and review from your uh, peers and uh, co-workers about the change you're doing and so you want to be able to change the branch while you're working on it but then once you merge it to master it's like fixed it's there you can't change it anymore and this is to be able to do that is important to change the commits uh, during the development is important for the reasons i mentioned earlier that you want the the commits to have these three things I mentioned. And if it doesn't, you want to be able to go back and change the commits before they get merged into master, because on master, everything should should be, let's say, perfect. OK, so feature branch-based workflow. And the first example I want to walk through is 
squashing multiple commits into one. Uh, I bet all of you have seen a git history where, or like a version control history, where someone's made a change and then there's another commit following immediately, like fix type or fix tests or whatever. Yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, if you want to keep, keep a clean git history, you don't want these. You, you want to get rid of these. You want to, uh, if someone says these two things, these two, these two commits shouldn't be separate, they should be together, you want to be able to go back and put them together. So I'll quickly show what's the best way of doing that. I have a sample set up there. Uh, first, because I have a lot of uh, git aliases, I'm going to have to remove these because otherwise I might accidentally use these and then you don't understand what I'm doing. Um, I guess better. I think it's changing. Better? Okay? Yes? No? Okay. Um, let's do this. Okay. Okay. All right. So we've gotten rid of those, so I don't accidentally use them. Um, I have an example here um, on the squash commit branch. So first off, um, we want to get an idea of what's going on here, and most of you probably use your IDEs or editors to check out like the git history and everything, but at the moment I'm going to show you everything in the console, uh, because that's where you want to be most comfortable with git, because when when things get messy you want to be able to come in and fix, fix it without relying on your ID. Uh, so let's have a look what's happening here. So let's do this. Okay, this is good. Let's add graph and one line, which makes it prettier. And if we're using graph, we should probably do this, which I'm not going to explain, but it's good to have in there. Okay, so now we have a log command. Let's just um, quickly add a name to it so we don't have to type it all out every time because we're going to be using this a lot. But this is the example I was talking about. We have a commit and then right after it we have another commit that says fix tests and we don't want that. We want to be able to go back and change this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the first commit we're, we're working with, we're going to copy the revision name or the revision of it and we're going to do git rebase interactive. Uh, just for an idea, uh, show up hands please who's used git rebase interactive. Okay, so not too bad. And we're going to run this against the commits parent because uh, this way we have this commit and everything following in the interactive rebase and we can work with it. Um, Let's see how that looks. It opens up the interactive rebase in an editor. I have Vim set up here. And these are the two commits we're uh, worried about. And what we can do here. Yeah. Why is the history reversed in this view versus in the uh, I mean, in this. Because you have a lot of things in Git log, a lot of the time, and you wanna have the recent ones at the top, I think. But this, in this way, it makes intuitively more sense because uh, the things, the commands I'm gonna show you now, 
these two. They uh, they work on the commit before this, before the command you use. So maybe it would get confusing the other way around. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. OK. In any case, uh, we have a few options here. I'm first going to show you squashing, which, as you can read here, is use commit but meld in the previous commit. So let's write squash or just s for the fixed tests commit. And it allows us to modify the uh, combined commit message of these two commits. So let's do that. I'm, I'm going to leave in this fixed test for now, although I actually wouldn't, because if your commit comes with fixed tests, the comment doesn't make sense anymore. But just as an example, I'm going to leave it in here. Now if we, we look at the history, this was the commit we worked with. Nope. Uh, it's a bit hard to see with so, so little room on the screen. But basically, the top two lines are the test changes, and this is the code change, and they're in a single commit. And now, if we were to check out that commit and run tests on it, they would pass. This ensures that every commit is complete. Right. But uh, what I don't like about this is, as I showed, it has the fixed tests in here. and. We don't actually care about the message of the second commit, so we're going to try a different thing instead. Uh, so first we have to go back to where we were before the interactive rebase, and for this I'm going to show you git reflog. Uh, who hasn't used reflog before, then this is basically a history of where your head has been in, in the recent, I don't know how many, uh, changes and this is very useful when you you mess up your interactive rebase for example or or move your branch to a location where it shouldn't actually be and you want to just go back to where you were like a few months ago and you look up okay we started the interactive rebase here so we want to get this commit or this location where we were right before that and we do hard reset onto that commit and we're back in back where we started all right so um, let's take this revision again run git rebase interactive against its parent and this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna use fix up instead of squash and as you can see down here it's pretty much the same as squash, but it ignores the second message or the commit of the message or the message of the commit you fixed up, uh, which is exactly what we want because the fixed tests message doesn't make sense anymore once it's merged into the first one. Okay, so let's just say don't quit. Um, so use logs. See, we have a single commit here. See how that looks like. Looks good. All the test changes and the code changes are in a single commit. And if we just quickly go there and see if the tests pass, they pass fine. Okay. Um, that's enough for squashing and fixing up. Um, now, let's talk about just changing a single commit. And we're going to use a few tricks we I just showed earlier for this. But um, now, a similar example. Um, but this time, that the fixed tests commit hasn't been made. There's just the uh, code changes, 
and then a lot of stuff on top of this and the tests have been broken and you don't know who broke it or what broke it and you want to find out okay so what you start with is you know that this change here the last <coughs> one on master that the tests were fine there you're gonna copy this then you're gonna run git bisect head and this revision which means uh, you're telling it to run a binary search on this range of commits and if you're saying that the at or head is is the uh, is the bad state you know uh, like the this is confirmed by you bad state which means this is the place where the tests fail and this is another commit where you know that the, the tests pass and you're gonna run this okay you're gonna add start here before that's better and you you can start it will start checking out the commits one by one by using binary search and you can verify if everything's fine or not and then say git bisect good git, git bisect bad and after roughly three steps it will tell you exactly where the issue got introduced but you can also do give it a command which it will run itself and when the command fails it understands that this is a bad revision and if it succeeds it understands that it's a good revision and it will do all the searching for you okay um, yeah And it will run a few times. And it tells us that this commit here, uh, it stops here. No, it doesn't. Okay. So it tells us that this commit uh, introduced the issue. And rebase against branches. Hey, admins question. Okay. Uh, let's get out of the bisect. Uh, do a log see that this is the commit here and let's start fixing it now um, and, uh, one way to fix the commit is to uh, once again start an interactive base against the commit's parent and instead of picking the commit you use edit which uh, picks the commit and then stops the rebase, allows you to do changes to the commit or add new commits or whatever and then continue the rebase and after you continue it will add those commits on top. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, let's see. Um, quick question. Yeah. What's the advantage of doing it this way versus creating a new commit then doing a rebase? and uh, moving the commit after the day one and That's what I'm going to show next. <laughs> but I, yeah, I want to walk through this example first. Okay, so we identified the commit, we, we went there, we used edit, and now we've stopped at this commit. As you can see, it shows uh, the current head is the commit that broke the build or the tests, and we need to fix it. So we uh, quickly find what's going on here. Do a search. Uh, nope. And I, I already know because I totally made the issue up that the issue is that this should be based ref. right? But in any case, you come in, you do your changes. Well. Uh, you do your changes, you fix the thing, and now you want to uh, actually add those fixes into the commit. And you could use maybe git add minus b is pretty common thing to use, where you can review everything you have staged before you stage them. It will 
provide you hunks, which is basically a set of changes that are separated by too many uh, non-changed lines. And it will ask you whether you want to stage these. Let's say yes. This looks okay, yes. And then you do git commit mend. Um, patch. Yeah. You could do also use a double dash patch. Um, and because we don't want to change the message, we know it's good, we do amend with no edit. Uh, and as you can see now, it also has the test changes in here, and the tests pass. And, and if, if everything looks okay, we just continue the rebase. We're back in the original state, but the commit here has been changed to fix the tests, and now the tests are should also be fixed here on top of the other commits as well. Okay, so this is one way of doing this. Uh, another way is what you mentioned, pretty much. Uh, once again, let's go to ref log before I start this thing. See, tests should be broken. They are. Um, yeah. So we know what we have to change to fix the tests in this position as well. We don't have to start an interactive rebase to find out why the tests are broken. So we could make the changes here. Um, and let's do that. Well, uh, So weird to have the font so, so big. Okay, um, let's make the changes without starting the rebase. Let's see that it does fix the tests. It does. Now, um, usually when there's a sm small set of changes, what I do is I add everything, and then I do git commit. Uh, verbose, which allows me to verify the changes. It just adds them as comments down here and call it something like fix tests. And what we learned earlier, we can squash the commits together. Let's do that again. We mark down the revision, take its parent, run interactive rebase against it. Now take the big fix tests and fix up. And test should pass. And we should have a thing, single commit here that is complete, has the test changes in there. Okay. So this is another way, but there's a third way, which is probably the best, and which I use often, um, using fix-up commits. And I'm going to show you right right away what they are. So let's once again go back. Um, now let's go here where we already made the changes, um, the fix the tests. See, we have the fix tests commit here. And not what we're gonna do is we're gonna run mixed reset against the the current heads parent. This this basically what it does it keeps the working directory exactly the way it is, but it's gonna reset head uh, to its parent, which means we basically discard the current commit but keep its changes in the working directory. And this way, we still have the changes and we don't have to go in and start doing them again. Okay, now this time, 
okay, there's mixed and there's soft. And the difference between the two is there's also hard, which also resets the working directory, but uh, mixed and soft don't. But soft also soft keeps the no. That's that's what it doesn't do. It keeps the changes that have been committed or so on. It keeps them staged. Uh, if you want to find out a better explanation, then yeah, soft mixed hard. There's a few there. Okay. Anyway, um, so before we used the, we just created a commit called let's add these called fix tests and then manually rebased and put it into the correct location, change the command to fix up. But this is quite a common thing to do, it turns out, and git can help you with this. So what you can do instead is you can do git commit dash dash fix up and you have to specify a revision, but I don't know the revision, so let's look it up first. Um, basically, you're saying uh, git to create a commit that's going to be used to fix up this other commit. And if you do this, it creates a commit for you, uh, which which is like any other commit, but it has uh, like a very specific message, which uh, git can use. Later, I'll show you right away. But it, it can use this message to do some work for you. Okay, so um, let's look at the things here again. This is the commit one we want to change. Right now, if we were to, we could do the same thing again. We could run the interactive rebase, move it to the correct location, and prefix it with fix up. But instead, we can run interactive rebase with auto squash. And what this does is basically using the fact or the convention of having the fix up bang or the squash bang both work in front of the commit names and then the title that this commit should fix up. Uh, Git can do this moving and prefixing it with the correct command for you. And let's see how that works. Okay, and we need the revision here. And as you can see, it moved it to the correct location, prefixed it with fix up, and we didn't have to do anything else than save and quit. Yes. So you don't do a typo or something? Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. There's no nothing special about that commit other than the title. Um, and once again, the tests should now pass. And we should have here a single commit that includes both the test changes and the actual changes. All right, so that's all well and good. Uh, let's see what else we can do. Um, pretty much in line with the other things I've shown. Uh, I, I've shown you how to squash multiple commits into one. But let's now break a single commit into two. This is to... I don't think I had it on the what and why slide, but uh, you also want to have your commits do only a single thing. Uh, a good example of why you want that is uh, a lot of people sometimes they move files or code and then also in the same commit change something that actually changes behavior of your code but then when someone starts going through the history to see what's happened they might ignore that commit because it looks like you're just moving code and it's hard to see what actually changed so you probably want to do your code moving and your code changes in separate commits. Uh, and also <coughs> stuff like changing to 
or adding two features in a single commit, it, it should be broken apart because maybe you, you decide you don't want one of those features later on, you can easily revert this and and also you have a single, in the commit message, you have a single uh, explanation for why you made that single change. So altogether, you want your commits to do one thing. It's hard to define sometimes what that one thing is, but uh, but let's say you you push the commit for review by your team, and someone says, yo, yo, yo stop, no, that's not going to work. You have to split this commit into two. Those are totally separate things. And so how do you do that? Uh, I have another example set up here, uh, split commits. OK, let's see. Um, <coughs> using the same change we had earlier. We see that there's a commit here that does rebase against base's head and it does something else. So it's really obvious from just looking at it that it does two things and someone's told us that go and fix that. Make that two separate commits. Um, one way we can do this is probably more than one way but how I would approach this issue is, once again, we start with an interactive rebase against its parent. We do an edit, so we select the commit and we stop the rebase or suspend it. Now, the head should be the commit we want to split apart, right? And it has a lot of things in here, but it also has the changes we you should be familiar with by now here and the test changes in here as well. Okay, so we want to break this apart. Um, first, what we want to do is we want to mark down, let me show you again, we want to mark down the revision of this commit because it has the message in here al already and when we break, break apart or when we create new commits out of this one, we want to reuse the message here. We don't want to start uh, thinking of all of this again from scratch. And so uh, you could use uh, git rev bars at, which would give you the revision of the current commit. And on Mac, you could do something like copy it to the clipboard. I think on Linux, there's xclip or something. You could do the same. Or what I prefer to do is just tag this temporarily. Well, uh, that is as the commit to split. Um, okay, now what we're going to do is, I showed you already earlier what uh, a mixed reset does, and we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to basically discard this commit, but keep all the changes in it. Now we have a lot of changes here, and what we're going to do is we're going to stage only a half of those changes, those changes that we feel should be in a single commit. Uh, let's use git that minus p for this. So we know that the three lines we've worked with throughout all the presentation, we know those by heart, so let's look for these first. So this is not it. Let's say no, we don't want to stage this. No, we don't want to stage this. Nope. Okay, this looks like something we want to stage, so yes. This as well, nope, 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 and this as well, yes. Now just to confirm what we staged, we can do git diff cached, and it shows us the currently staged changes. Looks good. Now let's make a commit out of this. Um, we're going to use minus C, which uh, basically tells git to minus c takes a, a revision or a reference to a commit and we're gonna tell use the message from that commit and it's a lowercase c if you were to use capital C it wouldn't even ask you to change the message it would just use it and uh, you could basically it wouldn't open an editor for you so let's do this 
um, so we're now only doing the first part of everything we probably want to revise the message a bit uh, let's say this okay keep the messages clean formatted um, save and quit okay now we have a uh, one of the two commits we wanted to create out of the initial one peak one and then we also have a lot of changes left over in the working directory here so let's just add all of these because we know these are going to be the part of the other commit we want to make and uh, create a different commit out of this now this time um, we want to keep the second half of the message here okay save and quit now just to confirm we have two separate commits here and now we can continue our rebase uh, no. and boom we have two separate commits split from one um, I've shown this to like in, in actual need to a few people and uh, no one has actually gotten it the first time so don't be discouraged if you don't understand how exactly it worked but uh, at least you know that you can do this and with the help of git man pages it shouldn't be too difficult uh, one more thing we probably want to delete the tag because it's not relevant anymore okay quick question yeah so when you were doing uh, git that patch for the first commit yeah what if uh, the Unrelated changes have been within the same file and like mixed together, and uh, you weren't able to say yes to the whole chunk. But uh, okay, um, it was small enough that you can split it down either. What could you do in that case? Okay, um, yeah, there's splitting, so uh, the add patch tries to give you reasonable hunks to either stage or not. But uh, it also allows you to split them to parts if there's like. Sure, but. What but if, if, yeah, sometimes it doesn't work. Then uh, I wouldn't use git add minus p for, in that case, but you could. You, could, you still could. Um, with. Uh, it depends. Maybe you can line by line, staging line by line, you could make it work. In that case. Yeah, uh, this, but this is uh, kind of a hassle. So what I usually use, I, I have some tools, but uh, what comes with Git is Git GUI, where you can stage line by line. And usually when like staging by hunk doesn't work for you, then this is what you can use, uh, which is also an issue if the file or the changes are in a newly created uh, file in which case you first need to do git add dash dash intent to add which stages the file without its contents so it basically stages the file with the same name but as it were an empty file and then you can start uh, adding line by line so yeah, uh, those are you, you're you're gonna have to work to get these good, but and <laughs> if if nothing else works, then I usually just go into the file, delete the irrelevant stuff, keep a copy of it. Because, well, you still have the history, so you have a copy, and once it's in a good location, ah, stage and then revert. Okay, and I think this is it. This is all I had to show today. Okay, I think uh, my changes haven't been updated because, yeah, because this thing, how do I full screen this? No. Okay, anyway, uh, the previous slide had hard here, which was incorrect, 
you either use mixed or you use nothing because mixed is the default. Um, and yes, that's it. Thank you. I, I marked down man git because whenever you're an is, you have an issue with git, just use man git dash whatever. And it, it has a pretty good documentation for basically whatever you, you need from git. Um, the slides are available at that URL. I have some few convenience commands that I use day to day in git.files. For example, the thing I showed earlier, um, I can show it quickly again. Uh, fix commits. Um, just uh, doing some setup, don't mind me. Okay, so now we're again where we had to basically fix a commit that was made some time ago. And for this, I have this useful command called fixup, which uses the things you've staged. And you give it a revision. Uh, let's see this thing here. Um, you give it a revision and you use maybe minus a and that's pretty much it. It does everything which I showed earlier for you. Uh, yeah, just to confirm let me now look at this commit. It has the best change in here as well. Yeah, okay. So if you're interested, check that out. There's not much more there except that one command. And I guess, yeah, the video might be available at some point if you want to go through it in your, on your own pace, how everything worked here. Okay. So once again, thank you. And if there's any questions, feel free to ask them now. Yep. Every project I'm working on. <laughs> so I mean, uh, yeah, I They should, yeah. Okay. I mean, I try to. Uh, do what I preach. Or follow what I preach. But uh, if they, if you really want to see exemplar, exemplary, Git commits. You should check out either Linux uh, Git repository or Git's Git repository. <laughs> they both should be available on GitHub just for view, and they have really, really good uh, commits there. Any other questions? Okay, so you guys can ask David uh, the break as well. So we do have pizzas in the.